St. Gregory the Great said, Whoever stains himself with the defilement of lust closes the gate of his heart against the entrance of truth. End quote. Following King David, King Solomon reigned over Israel. In 1 Kings 3, or 3 Kings 3 if you have a Douay Reims Bible, we read that Solomon loved the Lord. Solomon's intentions were pure. He desired to serve God and walk in his ways. Displaying his purity of intention, Solomon sincerely asked the Lord for a wise and discerning heart. He asked for wisdom to judge the people with justice and to discern between good and evil. His pure intention pleased the Lord. As a result, the Lord rewarded Solomon with unique and abundant gifts. Quote, and his speech pleased the Lord, that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and not asked for long life, nor asked for riches, nor asked for the life of thy enemies, but has asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. 1 Kings 3.14 so we read that God gave Solomon wisdom to a greater degree than anyone had ever possessed it. This is an example of how the Lord abundantly rewards pure intentions and sincere desires. King Solomon immediately displayed his wisdom by correctly judging between two women who quarreled over the same child. The people were amazed, and all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged, and they feared the king. For they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to do judgment. End quote. 1 Kings 3.28 And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country, and all the wisdom of Egypt, for he was wiser than all men, and his fame was in all nations round about. And he spoke three thousand proverbs, and his songs were a thousand and five. And there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon, from all the kings of the earth, which had heard of his wisdom. 1 Kings 4 Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth in both wisdom and in abundance. He had a navy, and he built a house for the Lord, the great temple. His kingdom was so magnificent that people came from distant places to see its splendor. We read of the Queen of Saba, and how she came to see him. This is the woman of whom Jesus spoke in Matthew 12:42. The queen of the south shall rise up in judgment with this generation, and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, a greater than Solomon is here. End quote. And the queen of Saba, having heard of the fame of Solomon in the name of the Lord, came to try him with hard questions. And entering into Jerusalem with a great train and riches and camels that carried spices, she came to King Solomon and spoke to him all that she had in her heart. And Solomon informed her of all the things she proposed to him. There was not any word the king was ignorant of, and which he could not answer her. And when the queen of Saba saw all the wisdom of Solomon, and the house which he had built, and the meat of his table, and the apartments of his servants, and the order of his ministers, and their apparel, and the cupbearers, and the holocaust, which he offered in the house of the Lord, she had no longer any spirit in her, and she said to the king, The report is true, which I heard in my own country. Thy wisdom and thy works exceed the fame which I had heard. End quote. First Kings 1 But then Solomon began to commit sins with women. God had commanded his people not to marry women of another nation, for they worshipped false gods. Quote, but King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, and he was joined to them with a most ardent love." End quote. 1 Kings 11.1 1. Solomon not only sinfully married women of another nation, but he indulged in sexual sins. As a result, his heart was very corrupted, and his faith and relationship with God were destroyed. Solomon became extremely blinded and enslaved to his sexual sins. He so worshipped these sins of the flesh that he actually had 700 wives and 300 concubines. 
Quote, and he, Solomon, had seven hundred wives, princesses, and three hundred concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass, when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites, and Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord. End quote. 1 Kings 11, 3-6 Solomon's sexual sins drove him to the depths of spiritual depravity and idolatry. Solomon, the one who formerly loved and served the Lord, the one who had been rewarded by him with unsurpassed wisdom and abundance, now built altars to the devil gods of the nations. Quote, and Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord. He built a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon. End quote. 1 Kings 11, 6-9 The Lord not only punished Solomon with further blindness, but he raised up enemies against Solomon and warned him of his demise. Quote, Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, Thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee. I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. And the Lord stirred up an adversary unto Solomon. End quote. 1 Kings 11, 11 to 14. Solomon died, and unlike David, the Bible gives us no indication of his repentance. It's also worth noting that when Solomon's kingdom was at its height of magnificence, we read that he was brought 666 talents of gold each year. 1 Kings 10.14, quote, And the weight of the gold that was brought to Solomon every year was 666 talents of gold, end quote. This number is mentioned twice in the Old Testament in reference to Solomon and the amount of gold that he received. It seems that it was around that time, or shortly thereafter, that Solomon fell into sin and became a beast of impurity and idolatry. The number 666 is of course mentioned in the Apocalypse, the book of Revelation, in reference to the number of the beast. Is there any significance in the fact that 666 talents of gold were brought to King Solomon when he was at the height of his magnificence? We believe that the answer is yes. We believe that 666, the amount of talents of gold he received, also symbolized man in the place of God. For we read in 1 Samuel 8 that when the Jews clamored for a king to lead them, the Lord was very displeased. Quote, then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel and said unto him, Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord, and the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should reign over them. The people of Israel wanted a king to lead them, to reign over them, like the other nations had. But the Lord was displeased with this request, because it meant that they rejected him as their king. They wanted a man to follow, a man to reign over them. Despite his displeasure, the Lord granted their request. So when Solomon received 666 talents of gold each year, he was basically being treated as God on earth. He and his kingdom were morphing from something that served the Lord and was rewarded by him with abundance to an idolatrous indulgence in inordinate luxury and wealth and being treated like God. So we believe that 666 talents of gold given to Solomon is an indication that the real meaning of 666 is man in the place of God. It means the substitution of man for God, the substitution of man for Christ. It's very interesting that Pope Pius X said that the distinguishing mark of Antichrist is man in the place of God. Pope St. Pius X, E. Supremi Apostolatus, October 4, 1903, quote, while, on the other hand, and this, according to the Apostle, is the distinguishing mark of Antichrist, man has, with infinite temerity, put himself in the place of God. End quote.